Hi guys, I'm back with another YouTube video. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics and that is self-care. Something that people always ask me about is what is the difference between self-care and self-love. Self-care consists of practices that make you feel good whereas self-love consists of practices that make you feel good about yourself. Today I'm going to be delving into some self-care practices that have helped me feel amazing recently and I cannot wait to share them with you guys. Without further ado, let's just dive right into this video. Using my 5 minute journal. I use this every single day or I try to use it every single day. I love the way it's set up. This is not sponsored at all. I just love this 5 minute journal. There's a place to express gratitude and what would make today great. That is my favorite section because I get to get really clear on my intentions for the day and it helps me focus in on what I actually want to achieve. Another favorite section of mine is in the nighttime section. Three amazing things that happened today. And it's funny because I've been writing down like the best moment of my days since I was like 16 years old in like 2017. So that is like super familiar to me. And it's also helped me become really positive, which of course is great. The more positive you are, I feel like the more positive things happen to you. The second self-care practice that has totally changed my life is just cleaning my room more often. This one sounds like tasky, but to be honest, when I look at my room and it's a mess, I personally feel a mess as well. I hate when there's stuff on my floor or I have books everywhere, makeup sprawled out against my table, my purses with all their contents spilling out everywhere, I cannot deal. I'm personally not someone who's very messy, but I can get very messy very quickly, especially with content creation. You're always trying to make your backdrop look nice. There is literally a ton of stuff on the other side that you don't see behind the camera. Once I'm done this video, you can guarantee the first thing I'm gonna do is clean my room so I have a clean mind and I can continue on with whatever I want to do today. The third self-care practice I wanna talk about is decluttering. This is different than cleaning your room or cleaning a space because decluttering is actually getting rid of things. Whether it is on social media, I find that sometimes I need to do a social media detox or I call it a social media declutter where I will unfollow accounts I'm no longer resonating with or even just images on my camera roll. I'm always trying to delete images off of it because I take photos of everything and it's just too many moments. I don't need to remember absolutely everything I'm doing in a day. Or on my computer, there's files. I don't need stuff from grade eight or anything really from high school. I can delete that stuff. That feels amazing. And then in general, just decluttering your room. I love going through my closet now. My mom used to make me do this when I was little and I absolutely hated it. But now when I clear out my closet, I'm so happy because that means there is more room for me to buy stuff. So personally, that one is a big one for me. Exercising in a different way at least once a week. I work out pretty much every day or I exercise pretty much every day. I tend to like to exercise, feel better when I exercise, but it does get boring. And when things get boring, it becomes a chore and it's no longer fun. So for me, changing up my exercise routine has really helped me like further enjoy like movement. Some things I like to do is I'm really into swimming right now. I just love going to the pool, whether it's indoor, outdoor, even just going to the beach. It's just so fun for me. I really like bike riding, going for a long walk, or even just taking my normal workout outside feels amazing. I seriously recommend taking your workouts outside if it's not too hot because the vitamin D just makes me feel so good and I feel a lot more optimistic. This one's actually a really hard one for me, but saying no. My whole life, I've been like, I've had the attitude that I don't wanna be a quitter and sometimes you have to quit things because if you're doing something you don't love, you are wasting your time. And this has been something that's been very difficult for me to learn, but it's not even just about quitting, it's just about if you're too exhausted to do something that day, you have to take the time and just say no. Sometimes your priorities have to shift and you have to prioritize yourself and what you need in the current moment. If that means missing school school or it means missing a class or taking a sick day, so be it. Your health and your mental health are much more important than whatever obligation you feel you have. This one is not doing anything that is considered work in bed. Honestly, this is a hard one for me because I used to do that all the time and there are times I still do it, 
but it's sometimes because that is where I get a creative flow, but I try really hard to not do work in bed because it keeps you up late, you get more exhausted, you don't really get that rest, and it also prolongs when you're going to bed because I don't know about you, I like to watch a show before bed, I do my journals, and it takes time. Doing your skincare routine, all that stuff takes time. And if you are working in bed, and then you're doing your nighttime routine, you're probably gonna be going to bed about an hour or two later. And this has happened to me so many times, but it's something that I've kind of pulled the plug on, and now I very rarely do work in bed. And if I do, it's maybe something fun, like picking some photos out for a photo shoot, or just doing some content creation stuff, but I really make sure that I want to do it, and that it's going to be fun, because if it's not, then I'm really just, working longer when I'm supposed to be resting. This one is an absolute game changer, planning out my week in advance and then doing daily planning, like writing down what tasks I want to accomplish the night before. This really, really helps me because again, it helps me get really clear on those intentions I wanna set for the day. I've been messing around with some new planning methods and I wanna be able to identify like where my goals are in different areas of my life and I wanna move forward like every week. So this has been something I've been kind of working at and trying to get a system, but I've discovered that the best way for me to do this is I have to identify all my roles in life and what I'm doing. Like I'm not just me, I'm also a content creator. I am a family member, a friend, a swimmer, a cheerleader. Like these are roles in my life that have different goals associated with them. And I just finally hit the roof and I wrote everything out. I wrote down every piece of content I wanna create for the next week or two. And that actually helped me because now I'm so much more organized. I don't have anxiety about what to do. I've designed a schedule for myself that is flexible so that if I do want to do some spontaneous activity because it's summer and I wanna enjoy my life, I can. I've got all my tasks laid out and there's room for me to move things around and do all sorts of things so I can live a balanced, happy, healthy life. Satisfying my cravings. So everybody gets cravings, like if you want some sort of food or even if it's like an activity, you just want to do something or eat something or whatever, you have a craving for something, doing it, following through with it. I realized this, I think maybe last summer or maybe even, I think I maybe realized it recently, like six months ago, but if there's something you want, you are better off just allowing yourself to have it because you will never be satisfied trying to find something else. Let's say I want mac and cheese. I eat the mac and cheese and I get my side salad and I enjoy it. I'm happy. I don't feel bad about it the next day or ever because I wanted it and then I carry on. This one's actually very new for me and it's something that I've only been doing now for I want to say two weeks or maybe a month I would say yeah probably almost about a month and this is like taking vitamins and minerals I never took any vitamins before I take a B vitamin a complex of like 100 makes me feel amazing but even more so I'm taking iron and my iron's not really that low but Oh my goodness, what a difference it makes taking iron. I feel like when I don't take iron, I'm running on half energy. And when I do take iron, I'm like full out, ready to go, ready to accomplish everything I want. Hear me out, this is a bit of a weird one, but listening to podcasts. Podcasts can be like, they can be educational or fun or whatever. But for me, whenever something's in my environment, like if I hear something, I see something, I smell something, it really absorbs into me. Sometimes, like if I listen to a podcast that if the topic's negative or it makes me feel a certain way that I don't like, I will absorb that into my environment. So what I've been doing now is I only listen to podcasts when I really feel like it. If I don't wanna listen to something educational, I throw something fun on and I just roll with it, I do the dishes, I do my makeup and I go with it. I feel like before I used to feel like pressure like, podcasts need to be learning, but that's not the only reason we absorb media. We watch TV, we listen to music, and we're not always learning all the time, and we also don't need to be learning all the time. The last one, I can't believe I'm sharing this because it's just, it's not weird, it's just, I like it, I have fun doing this, and it is singing in the car super loud, like going full out concert mode. Yeah, like if you're singing in the shower still, 
let me turn you on to like singing in the car by yourself. This is honestly, I've been doing this ever since I started going to university and it just makes me feel good. I feel like I feel alive. I feel like my alter ego is coming out. It gives me a break from thinking so much. When you're in the car by yourself, you've got a long drive ahead of you, there is way too much time to think. And this is fine. You get to jam out to some music you like or rediscover old music you like. And I personally love it. It's so fun. I hope you guys like this video. Self care and like self love topics are my jam what I like the most. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up because I am so happy to share these tips with you. I feel like I've learned a lot on my own journey. I'd love to share what I've learned with you guys so I can help you on your journey too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below. I will see you guys in the next one.